On Larry King Now, real estate mogul Ryan Serhant. I'm a strong believer that you need to have short-term speed and long-term patience. Some of my biggest deals have taken five years, six years, but my getting up and going every single day, it, that's in my blood. I have get up and go blood. Were you a hit right away? No, absolutely not. I made no money for the first three years. I think I quit every day. I distinctly remember standing in Soho, getting lost with a client, having her yell at me, leave, and then calling my mom and saying, I don't think I can do this. I don't really view myself as someone who works in the real estate business. I, I work in the people business. I connect buyers to sellers, sellers to buyers, tenants to landlords, and the skeleton of that happens to be real estate. But I don't wake up dreaming of crown molding. Plus, secret talent. Oh man, I'm a really good husband. You just might not know it. All next on Larry King Now. Welcome to Larry King Now. We're in New York City, and our guest today is Ryan Serhant, who at 33 is among the most successful real estate brokers in the country. Ryan stars in Million Dollar Listing New York, also a star and producer of the new series Sell It Like Serhant. The seventh season of Million Dollar Listing premieres June 12th at 10 p.m., and Sell It Like Serhant airs Tuesdays at 10 p.m., both on Bravo. And Ryan's new book, also called Sell It Like Sir Hand, will be published this fall. Where, where did you come from? How did you suddenly <laughs> burst on the real estate scene? Uh, I don't think it was too sudden. I moved here in 2006 when I graduated college, and I moved here to be an actor. I gave myself two years to do theater because I didn't want to regret not doing it. And I ran out of money relatively quickly. It's an expensive city to live in. And I had a friend from college who said, listen, get your real estate license. It's really easy to get. It's a couple hundred bucks. Take a class for a few hours and rent apartments, you know, and whatever money you keep, that'll pay your rent. And then you can do whatever else you want to do. And that was uh, the day Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy in 2008. That was my first day. And I haven't stopped since. Did you get any work acting? I did a uh, sort of. I did a lot of free theater. And I was a doctor on As the World Turns. Yes. As the World Turns. Yes, I was Evan Walsh the IV. Uh, they killed me pretty quickly. <laughs> I took a syringe to the heart on top of a hospital awaiting my helicopter to take me to the Caribbean to do my research in peace <laughs> while fighting with my grandmother. It was a whole thing. So that <laughs> did didn't the, work out. Did the Lehman Brothers bankruptcy affect or not affect your start? It did not affect my start. It, in hindsight, was probably the best time for me to start because I, I didn't have any money. So I didn't have a lifestyle that I was trying to keep up like a lot of other real estate agents who had been in the business previously. And I didn't know, I didn't know the difference between Broadway and West Broadway. I, I was born in Texas. I grew up outside Boston. I was very fresh to New York City. And I just started meeting people on the street. I met people in Starbucks. I, I would find tourists with lots of bags outside Saks Fifth Avenue next to our office on 49th Street, ask them if they needed real estate in New York. I mean, those were my initial clients. That was my initial outreach. Where were you working? I had a company called Ness Seekers, where I still work today. So you had an office there, and they took commissions. They took mm -hmm. a percentage of your commissions. You had a desk and a way to operate, right? And yes, and that is, that's it. And leads, right? Uh, no leads, really. The leads in New York for us came from the street, came from Craigslist back in the day. And that was almost 10 years ago. My 10-year anniversary in this business is coming up this fall. Just 10 years? Yes. Were you a hit right away? No, absolutely not. I made no money for the first three years. I think I quit every day. I think I distinctly remember standing in Soho, getting lost with a client, having her yell at me, leave, and then calling my mom and saying, I don't think I can do this. I think New York's too crazy. It's too tough. It's too competitive. I'm not from here. I don't, you know, it's the business. Everyone lies to you. It's not for me, but I, you know, tomorrow's another day. So I just kept at it. All right. So what turn for you? Uh, I mean, a big turn for me was million dollar listing. Um, but I, I do credit that show as well as I have a, a, a relentless work ethic. I work consistently. And because I knew that it wasn't from New York, I didn't have connections like other people did. I may not be the smartest, but the one thing that I could control was how hard I worked. 
And if I worked harder than every other broker, if I was in the city working on clients while they were in the Hamptons or while they were at the movies or while they were sleeping, that eventually I would be able to get ahead. And that's the mindset that I've had for the last 10 years. How'd you get on a million dollar listing? I went to an open casting call at the Hudson Hotel with 3,000 real estate agents. But you had not had any success at all, right? I had sold a couple large apartments from clients that I met by posting ads on Craigslist and by meeting people on the street. On the street? On the street. And I got noticed by a developer uh, who was developing a building. It was a rental to condo conversion in the financial district called 99 John Street. And they asked if we would take over sales for the whole building. And then in that building, I used as my calling card. And I became very, very in tune with how the power of PR enables you to build a brand out of yourself, especially as an entrepreneur. Because real estate salespeople, all salespeople are entrepreneurs that way. How many years you've been on a million dollar listing? We are entering our seventh season now, but we started filming in 2010. Why is it such a hit? I think people like watching how other people live their lives in terms of how they live their jobs. And I think people also are addicted to seeing real estate. When you see that, it seems like there's a new real estate show coming out every month now. I'm told that the trailer for the next season says, mm -hmm. this is by far the worst day of my career. <laughs> What happened on that day? Oh, man, you'll have to tune in and find out. <laughs> you know, I give the show a lot of credit for, for really following what our day is like. And it's not all rainbows and, you know, and sunshine. We lose deals all the time. And it gets relative. You, know, you try to build a volume business so you can do as many deals as possible so that when you do lose that deal, it doesn't hurt that bad the way it did when I first started. But you know, I think that day when we were filming, I had a building, I lost a building, I lost a big client, an offer didn't go through. And I mean, it was just like every hour something terrible happened where by the end of the day, I was like, I gotta call my mom. I don't think I could do this anymore. Does the good realtor need patience? Yes, over the long term. I'm a strong believer that you need to have short-term speed and long-term patience if you're going to be a salesperson or be an entrepreneur. You have to be able to act quickly. You have to know when to push and when to persist. You have to know when to guide conversations and when to let situations unfold on their own. And you have to have patience with long-term clients because that's how you build your business. Some of my biggest deals have taken five years, six years. But my getting up and going every single day, it, that's in my blood. I have get up and go blood. Is it easier to sell a house or to buy one? it is easier to buy a house. Absolutely, because you have your choice, especially now. New York City has a lot of inventory, unlike the rest of the country. The United States as a whole has an inventory shortage. I talked to lots of brokers all over the country, and all their questions are, how do I find something for my client when there's nothing on the market, or I've lost six bidding wars? New York City, it's the opposite. You know, There's no regulation here on, on really who can build. If you have enough money, you buy a site, you get the approvals, city okays it, you can build. So there's a lot on the market. I think there's more on the market now than there has been in multiple years combined. In the city, is it mostly apartment condos rather than houses? It's majority condos and co-ops for sale. Condos make up a small percentage, even though that's all people talk about, and then townhouses. Our guest is real estate mogul Ryan Serhant. We're discussing his new show and life in the public eye after the break. We'll be right back. We're back with Ryan Serhant. What a story. All right, you have a new show, Sell It Like Serhant. Yes. Walk me through it. Sell It Like Serhant is a show that came about because I've been on Million Dollar Listing for six years, going not on seven years. Not in conflict years. with the other show. No, it's the same no. network. What uh, happened? And it's also though? not me selling real estate. It's me helping other salespeople learn how to sell whatever their product is so they don't lose their job. Any product? Any product. So it's the only sales show that really exist. In every episode, I go into a different job. I'm helping someone sell kitchen cabinets in one. I'm helping someone sell hot tubs in the other. Where they need these jobs, they need these commissions. that are small commissions relative to New York City real estate commissions, but they need this money to be able to keep their house, to be able to feed their family. And they're not great salespeople, and they are on the border of losing their job. So I come in, step in, and try to help them if I can. Is selling teachable? Yes, 100%. I am the original anti-salesperson. I was an introvert, I was overweight, I had bad skin growing up, I was super shy, self-conscious. That's why I got into theater, because I, 
I enjoyed being other people more than I really enjoyed being myself. And then I only got into real estate because I, I had nowhere else to go. It was either get into real estate, get my license, or be a bartender, or wait tables, or move home. And none of those were okay with me. And so I've had to come out of my shell over these last 10 years and teach myself how to be a salesperson. Can a great salesman sell anything? Yes. Yes. Anything. If they know the product, if they learn the product. I mean, can a great salesperson sell something that isn't worth anything? Probably not. You know, there becomes kind of that borderline there of if you want to actually sell that product or not. So you could go work for an auto dealer and if he brings traffic, you'll sell cars. Yes, I could. I don't know if I'd want to, but yes, I Is could. competition's intense? Yeah, there's something like there's 50,000 real estate agents that I compete with every single day. And more and more people get into the business every single day. You know, more, more and more younger people are getting into the business, which is good. It used to be that real estate agents were an afterthought career or an after career career. Or sell insurance. Exactly. Now, people are graduating college and becoming real estate agents. People are graduating high school, skipping college and becoming real estate agents. And so it just adds to the competition, which is a good thing. But in New York City, over the last 10 years, the same amount of homes have sold every year, give or take. You know, in 2007, 2008, you know, it was 11,400 homes sold in Manhattan. Last year, 11,300 and something sold in Manhattan. So the demand never changes. So there's a lot of real estate agents who don't make any money, don't sell anything. And so it's, it's a supply and demand game, which is fun. What's the best thing about selling real estate? There is no ceiling. There are ceilings in the apartments we sell and in the houses we sell, but no one will ever tell me that I've sold too much. There is no ceiling in being an entrepreneur where I can wake up and create my own brand for my own business every day. I want to do a different TV show, let's do it. I want to write a book, let's do it. I want to do a mobile game, let's do it. No one's going to tell me no. And every person is a client. I just met you. You are now my new client. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> oh, obviously, because I'm impressed. And if I was going to buy a place in New York, I would call you. Let's do it. I know how to reach you now. <laughs> so you never give up. No, you can't. You can't. There was a book years ago called The Sale Begins When the Customer Says No. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Are you relentless? Yes. You like the limelight? I do. <laughs> yeah, I do. Obviously you do. Well, the more people who know what I sell, the better. And I've gotten business in the craziest ways. You don't like. just have to, well, you don't just have to post ads on the internet and hope that people call you. Everywhere I go, I make sure that I meet three new people every single day. And if I'm on my honeymoon in New Zealand, I'm meeting people in that resort or on that boat. And we, I've sold things to those people. We were just in South Africa, met clients there, brand new people, about to list a penthouse in the Greenwich Village for $28 million because I was in South Africa and bumped into somebody. And so that's always in the back of my mind, especially in a place like this in New York. You're walking down the street, everyone is a client they might just not be aware of it yet. Coming up, we'll talk about home ownership among millennials and his most memorable sales with the million dollar listing star, our guest, Ryan Serhampton. We're in New York City. We'll be right back. We're back with Ryan Serhampton. Owning a house used to be fairly accessible. A GI Bill, is it harder now? It is. Why? It's harder to save money. It is most often a good investment if you can afford the down payment. But if you can't afford to save the money for the down payment, it's really hard to own a home. So less and less people are purchasing. More and more people want to, but you know, rents are very low in Manhattan now, relatively speaking. And so people continue to rent. And you know, that dream, I think, is fading just a little bit. Is rent the scourge of your business? No. You know, I diversify my business. So we do rentals and we do sales. And you don't my, make money, much money on rentals, do you? Relatively speaking, we make less commission on rental deals than we do on sale deals. But I, I don't really view myself as someone who works in the real estate business. I, I work in the people business. I connect buyers to sellers, sellers to buyers, tenants to landlords. And the skeleton of that happens to be real estate. But I don't wake up dreaming of crown molding. 
I wake up thinking about my clients and how I'm going to make them happy and help them find their dream home or help them sell for a record price per square foot that has never been achievable in Soho. That's what goes through my head. What determines the price? The, the buyer? The, what, what, why, why is a house in Manhattan might be 12 million and in Iowa, 800,000, same house? Location, 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 always. And who determines that? Who wakes up in the morning and says, that house is $7 million? The marketplace determines it. Sellers would like to think that they're the ones who determine the price point, but they're not. You have comparable sales. So if we're looking to sell that apartment right there, it's a four bedroom, 2,500 square feet. We'll look and see if any other four bedrooms in that building in that same line have sold in the last six months or the last year. If not, we'll look across the street. You do a price comparison report. We look at all of the comparables and try to best accurately to you know, price the unit out. So if a house, if a guy builds a new house across the street from you yep. and he gets a lot more than you paid, your house will go up? Relatively. But in New York, every building is its own vertical neighborhood. People will pay more to live in that building because it's a brand in and of itself than they will to be in the building across the street. Same thing for townhouses. And people care about, you know, they don't just care about the location. They care about the light, the air, the finishes, the quality, how the layout affects how their family life is going to be. So there's a lot of little things that go into that price point. What effect did 9-11 have on apartments and condos and like downtown New York? It had a big effect for a short period of time. I wasn't here at that time. I was in high school. Um, I started in the business in 2008. But from what I understand is it had obviously a uh, a massive effect on Lower Manhattan, but Lower Manhattan perseveres. You know, everyone who's in Lower Manhattan, they're all fighters. Same thing after Hurricane Sandy. After Hurricane Sandy, everyone said that Lower Manhattan was done. No one's ever going to buy there. Three months later, we were walking clients around Wall Street, and they were saying, why is everything so wet? Oh, right, that hurricane. I need a place to live. <laughs> Millennials, do they treat home buying differently? Yes, it is still that dream. It's still that wish. You know, millennials want their homes to be Instagrammable. So that's the big difference in the types of clients that we work with. You know, longer clients, they, they want to be in a home that's cool, that'll have, be great for photos. Older clients don't care so much about that. They just want good value. What was your biggest sale? I mean, I sell, I'm a volume agent. I'm a volume broker. And so I have sellouts of 200 million here, 300 million there. Largest single sale I've done in the last year was right up here on Park Avenue for $36 million for a three-bedroom facing the park. What's the percentage your realtor gets? That we get? It depends on the deal. The lowest amount is typically 2.5%, but it can be as high as 6%. What about these ads of guys, I've got a book. You can, I'll, you'll own a home with no money down and I'll see you successfully. Buy, oh, there's no problem. Buy, oh, you're buying homes. It's the easiest thing ever. What do you make of that? Scam. It's dangerous, more than anything else. I think you have to be very careful when you're spending money. Whether it's buying a home or buying a car or buying anything, you live in your monthly payment. So always read the fine lines, read the details in the small print. If you don't have money in the bank to be able to afford what someone is telling you you can afford, maybe you shouldn't buy it. Up next, we'll talk about risk-taking, strange jobs, and up-and-coming neighborhoods. Our final moments with Ryan Serhan, who's quite a guy, right after this. Back with Ryan Serhant, uh, he's of course the star of Million Dollar Listing, and his new show is Sell It Like Serhant, airs Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Both shows are on Bravo. He's got a book coming out called Sell It Like Serhant. He has become an industry. Why do you love real estate? I'm a deal junkie. I've grown into one. I love the process. I love doing the deals. And I love helping people find their homes. And I love helping people realize investments that they've made over the course of time. It's the most fun thing I can think of selling at the volume that I'm able to sell it at. What advice do you give to the new broker? Don't take a day off for your first three years. Join a team, keep your head down, buckle up, and listen. Your goals changed over the years? Yes. Yes, they do. 10 years ago, my goal was to pay my rent of $1,100 in Koreatown. I have different goals today. Um, and so your definition of success changes. And that's important to always redefine what success means to you. 
over time. You have children? Otherwise you'll, no, I don't have children yet. Where do you live? In Soho. Apartment or house? In a penthouse. Penthouse. Did you do your own deal? Yes, I did. Of so course. you kept the commission. Okay. <laughs> if we finish with a game of If You Only Knew, I just throw questions at you. Okay? Let's do it. Biggest up and coming neighborhood in New York? Greenpoint. Brooklyn? Yes. Don't Brooklyn. seem so surprised. Yes. Greenpoint? I'll take you there. There's good deals. Don't have to take me there. I, I grew up in Bensonhurst. Yeah, there you go. What happened in Greenpoint? It's, it's the most up and coming. Everybody wants to be in Greenpoint now. Greenpoint, we used to yes. call it. <laughs> wow. Hottest real estate market in the country? Manhattan. Secret talent? Oh, man. Secret talent. I'm a really good husband. You just might not know it. <laughs> Guilty pleasure? Uh, Oreo ice cream on the couch and Netflix. Weirdest job you ever had? I was a hand model. A what? A hand model. A pretty successful one, actually. I helped model hands. gloves? I helped, no, my, my hands. I, I modeled phones for AT&T for quite a long time when I was, before I got into real estate. And would you just shoot your hand? I would hold phones. I have large hands and really long fingers, and so I would hold phones and I was able to show off the fingers at the same time, and I would hold Nespresso capsules. It was a different life. Biggest risk you ever took? Coming to New York City. Who would you trade places with for a day? You. <laughs> Something you wish you were better at. <sighs> Running. Best advice you ever got? Someone said to me once, I'd rather regret the things I did than the things I never tried. Great line. What keeps you up at night? Fear of not living to my potential. Last time you were starstruck? 20 minutes ago when I walked in here and met you. I'm with Larry King. This is crazy. What's something you're afraid of? <sighs> I'm afraid of... What I told you, what keeps me up at night. I'm afraid of not being as successful as, as I can be because I don't work for it. Best compliment you ever got? Best compliment I ever got. I, the reality of Ryan Serhant far exceeds the hype. Do you get recommended a lot from cl a client buys a house and Another friend asks yes. him and they say, call him. Yes. That's a great one, White, when you yes. get that. Yeah, it's the referral business, when you do right by people. Interior design trend that's been done to death. Rose gold. <laughs> Strangest fan encounter. A guy stopped in the middle of the street, screamed at me in Soho on the corner of Houston and Broadway, and caused a minor traffic accident. Freaked me out. Yelling at you about what? That I'm the guy. I'm the real estate guy. Needed to take a photo. I don't think he realized he was still in the middle of the street. Did you say Houston and Broadway? Yes. That neighborhood was the worst. When I was a kid, there, yeah. was, there, was, East, there was Lower East Side. Yeah. That's now the beginning of Soho at the northernmost point, and that's where my office is. <laughs> Something you long believed to be true and realized wasn't. People are good by nature. <laughs> and something we don't know about you. Come on, give us something, Ryan, no one knows. That no one knows? A deep-held thing you only you know. <laughs> oh, man. Um, what a, I mean, most people know my life, you know? I, I was yeah, you're on too reality public. TV for, for a very long time. I don't think a lot of people know that I spent many, many, many years as a contractor's laborer. I was a roofer. I, was, I did manual labor for many summers. That was my early job. My dad made us work when we were young. What did your was, father do? He was worked in investment banking in Boston. And he made you work at, you, you, you held yes. bricks and? Yeah, and roofing and 80 pound bags of shingles on the shoulder going up. And I hated it at the time. 
think I resented him a little bit at the time, too, for making us work so hard. But I swear it's why I work so hard now. Great pleasure meeting you. Ryan. Good to meet you as well. Thanks to my guest, Ryan Sirhan. Sell It Like Sirhan airs Tuesdays yes. at 10 p.m. and Million Dollar Listing New York premieres June 12th at 10 p.m. Right? Yes. Both are on Bravo. And you can always find me on Twitter at Kings Things. From New York, I'll see you next time.